Well, I certainly didn't expect to be doing the video now, but can you see that? Yeah. Let's see if I can get him in there, baby. Hello, spider. I love you. I love spiders, so go, baby, go. I think I freaked it out when I turned on the, um, the light. Okay, how do I get back to one? There we go. Boop, boop. Um, sorry, I'm listening to craft work. Hold on, I'll turn on the light or the, um, oh, it worked right off the bat. Cool. So hopefully you can see this. Yeah, I did. Uh, part of my day was uh, doing this. Um, yeah, I'm trying to help out, you know, the live stream. And um, like I said, now that um, I want to concentrate just on one year, like basically do what the Great War channel was doing. And I'll do my twist, obviously, and I'll, I'll uh, put things on the uh, the shrunken down 75% scale Dervel Creek map here. Um, I, I'm so glad I still had a um, strategic map uh, thing printed out here because, you know, it's not, the Black Sea doesn't kind of go that way. It's a lot, you know, further down on the right hand side, but it's, you know, I've got to like live. Um, I do want to get like an Africa map popped here so that way we can um, take a look at what the heck was going on in Africa. Um, I also printed out this, hold on here, I'm just going to move my keyboard. Uh, so I printed out a um, 1915 calendar and then I'm just using the little, the little black button to, uh, you know, like what day it is, like obviously corresponding with our time and those uh, buttons or pins or whatever are um, showing you if you wanted to play a scenario in Der Weltkrieg that started in 1915 you could these are the ones to do and then I just color coded them so you could you know you could play the Western Front uh, uh, section 13 if you go to that uh, part of the rule book module thing and you could play the second start the second uh, Battle of Eat and Artois first turn would be turn six of April 1915. And then you could also play um, section three of the Eastern Front of the Gorlitza Tarnuf breakthrough uh, scenario. First turn, uh, turn one of uh, May 1915. And the Italian Front, section four, May 1915 scenario. First turn, turn seven of May 1915. As far as I know, he's, I guess, doing the, I think it's the 23rd of May when um, there was actual combat uh, between the Austrians and the Italians. But I think the first Battle of the Asanzo didn't start until mid-June. So I may be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. Um and then the fourth one you could play is the um, uh, from uh, Serbia, the Defiant, which you can find in the Eastern uh, Front um, uh, module. And that's October 1915 scenario, specific rules. First turn would be turn two of October 1915. So I thought this would keep me showing like, you know, like for later on in a live stream what uh, to chat about. Basically, okay, this is what you could play if you, you know, if somebody showed up at your house and said, hey, I want to play Der Weltkrieg, but a game in 1915, you could say, well, let's play, you know, um, something leading up to the first battle of the Asanzo on the Italian front, and away you go. Um, so, yeah, I think this should, this should be okay, um, I'm hoping. Anyways, like I said, the live stream stuff, I think it's, it's going well, and... Um, Maybe part of the live streams uh, later on, like when we approach certain dates, I'll start talking about this is what was going, like this is a scenario you could play and what was going on, you know, we could take a look at the scenario. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, hold on. I'll hit pause. Don't freak on me, puss. I'm sorry. No, um, Leo is sleeping near, near the... Um, the heater vent and uh, he's going to be a little ticked off in a minute when I open the door but I want to show you how much snow 
we're uh, getting because it's just been snowing constantly. Like, um, what did I say to somebody today? I could make like an apartment complex for, of Quincy's. It's just nuts. Look at that, man. Just keeps, like I didn't even, I haven't even shoveled from uh, like the day before or whatever. Like that's like, it's like, thanks a lot. I just can, like it's almost merging. It's ridiculous. Hey, hold on. You know what freaked me out? I did absolutely sweet pee all with this game today. And I was thinking uh, last night before my second sleep or whatever the heck. Um, okay, Chris, you're going to devote the entire Sunday to this game and blah, blah, blah. And you won't go on YouTube and you'll just, you know, spend your... And it was like, <laughs> ah, that certainly didn't happen. Hold on. Now... This chapter, man, it's not because I've hit a roadblock uh, with the uh, Sun Tzu book or anything. It's just for me, mind bogg bogg bogglingly, I oh, forget it. Uh, just been blowing my mind. How's that? Um, it's this chapter. I think this is the Chinese writing of that. So that's the transcription. I wouldn't even say a proper translation, probably not, but I think that's, imagine having that as a t-shirt. Oh, whoa. Oh my God. If that's the right thing, it would, I'd lose my mind. But anyways, this chapter, it, I just find, um, oh, just, um, there's just so much here. Uh, it's like a textbook in a, in a, you know what I mean? Like within a chapter, it's just, anyways, um, I just keep rereading it and I'm uh, writing it out by hand. And um, I just keep rereading it because <laughs> I'm like, there's just so much here. It's like a, a mini book in a chapter. Like I said, it's just like, and it just blows me away. Okay, hold on. So, I still have it popped up. Cool. So, this is a game I played, good God, maybe five years ago uh, with my uh, artist friend, colleague at work. I shouldn't call her a friend. She's, you know what I mean? Like, she's an artist colleague that um, I know of. But, I, you know, it's not like, hey, you know, can I uh, borrow $100? Like, she'd tell me to piss off. Um Anyways, I played the Grizzled with her. She brought it to work, and that was probably my very first, actually, World War I game. Um, it shook me to the core after that game. We played it at our, the little cafe um, at our workplace during lunch hour, and um, I'm not saying it effed me up, but it... Um, it was like a movie that, or a book or whatever that, um, it, I took with, it took, you know, I went with it for a long time afterwards. Um, I would tell people about this months later. Um, so hold on. So this is a coloring book I picked up. I picked up two of them. Um, my, I don't know, whatever the hell she is. Um, a super nice kid. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that though. Um, my niece's daughter. I, I bought two copies of this coloring book because she lost her marbles when she saw my Halloween one. Um, I didn't even start it. I, I didn't even do anything in here. But afterwards, when I was putting about to put it away today, I went, oh my F. Dude, man, do a World War I coloring book. I can't draw, but you know somebody who can draw, and you know somebody who played a World War I game with you, and she probably looks at these types of illustrations and laughs. Like, I can do this in my sleep or with my feet while I sleep with, you know, REMing, and I still get a half-decent picture. But I'm like, maybe like even just like 10 pictures, but... World War One themed super. Anyways, hold on. That's the um, plate that um, 
Rob brought uh, on the uh, the cornbread on. You, I know, Charles, I'm sorry, Charles Latour, if other people don't know who you're talking about, and I'll pop his uh, thing, thingamajig on the, uh, in the end of screen thing. Um, I tried to do so many different things with corn, his southern cornbread today, it's not funny. And I did some amazing things. Um, uh, one thing I did was I used them like croutons. I cubed it up and let it dry a little tiny, tiny bit, and then put it in a... Um, uh, slow cooked thing that I gave uh, Rob yesterday. He loved it. Um, it was awesome. Uh, secondly, what did I do? I sliced, um, well, two slices, then fried it in, in olive oil on a frying pan with um, uh, both, both slices had a layer of spinach and then mozzarella, beautiful, like uh, super good mozzarella uh, cheese. And then I just put, uh, put a pan on top of the pan, uh, a lid on top of the pan so I could, you know, keep the heat in and moisture. Popped them together and made myself a mini cornbread, spinach, mozzarella, grilled cheese sandwich. Oh my God. Um, I will say though, the taste and the flavor begged to have some ham, like uh, some thin you know what I mean? Like thin fried ham, I think would have just, ah, not sweet though. I'm not talking like honey sweet ham, but like a nice, oh, would have been wonderful. Um, they do other things with it. Still got some left. Uh, you know what blew me away actually about his cornbread or about Northern cornbread versus Southern cornbread? Um, I far prefer uh, Northern cornbread warm straight up rather than southern cornbread warm straight up i far prefer southern cornbread cold straight up than the northern one i mean toppings afterwards it doesn't matter you're already effing with the flavor but yeah i was shocked i was like nope i don't like um as much as what i'm saying um yeah cold though oh my god the next day it tasted great okay hold on there. Take a look, man. That's the amount of snow that's accumulating on the mini roof in front of my um, house. Like, that's crazy, man. Okay, doke. Hold on. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like these colors. Like, uh, but the pink didn't work uh, on the first coat. So, eh, we'll see what happens. But, come on, man. For little mini explosions or combat situation, you know, like, this was a on August 4th, 1916. You know, I could do that kind of crazy nonsense. Yeah, I think it'll work. Um, they also had um, little anchors for ports, lighthouses, and little schooner things. So I'll use those um, for naval stuff uh, that I can anyways, and away we go. Hold on. You know what? This game really is nice. I'm glad that... Um, Rob suggested playing it because, um, yeah, I also like this level, I think, of uh, thinking. I'm not so much maybe into um, constant combat, like, you know what I mean? Like, well, it's, well, maybe I'm wrong. I, I'll have to, you know, but I like this. Um, just trying to think about, um, well, he's going to have to teach me, but it's also been nice to not have to think is what I'm saying. Like someone else is doing all the uh, the heavy lifting for me. It's nice. So, and he was grateful. He said uh, about uh, the other stuff that we were doing. Um, he was like, "Chris, man, you do you do so much." So I was like, "Oh, cool." But I'll tell you again. Rob has gone. Maybe he found his little. Um, you know what I mean? Like his version of uh, what I'm up to. So hey, all the power to him, man. And I'm I'll uh, I'll uh, like I don't know um, surf in his wake. No worries. Hold on. Yeah, it's a few months away, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that'll be, um, certainly something I'll, that I will, um, I gotta start, um, getting ready to play. I've got all the, I think, I don't know if I have any of the, I don't know if there's any extra whatevers, but I think I have all the expansions. Um, this one here is the Grand Alliance. I don't know what happened to the case or if I got a case or what, but, um. 
But uh, these are not print and play. These are the actual whatever thingamabobs. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a shot. Like, I think it's uh, a an enhanced version of Pocket Battles uh, from Zedman Games, which I absolutely love. Hold on. Yeah, and this little sucker. Um, well, you can see I actually adapted. I changed it. I'm going to use the... Um, I'm going to use the uh, the camcorder. Um, I did a little play test video, which uh, I didn't post to YouTube, but um, it shows. Oh, the resolution is so much better. I can get uh, I can get right down and, uh, you know, zoom in and out so nicely. The colors popped like there was no tomorrow uh, compared to the uh, the webcam. Um yeah, so I was like, screw this. I'm going to use this. Uh, I want, you know, people to see it a lot better. But I'll tell you one thing. I can't wait. Well, I can't wait. I have to wait. Um, it's going to be nice to watch Meandering Mike's playthrough of Tannenberg, the Spence and Gable uh, Tannenberg, because uh, he'll be using the, well, proper everything. The map, the counters. The whole nine yards and i'm going to be honest with you um you know some people are better at some things than others that's why we have you know why we are different and as far as i'm concerned um meandering mike is like head and shoulders better than i am at doing playthroughs for games uh that's just the way it is so you know i i they're lovely to watch and um I think there'll be far more value for money or, or you know, if you're looking at uh, time as money or whatever. So, yep. Um, yeah. But I'm so, it's just so weird to think that um, this game seen, uh, this game has seen basically no, probably no attention in how, in how long. And now it's going to get uh, basically two playthroughs in one year. So that's nice. All right. Hold on. Maybe or not. I don't know. I think I'm like falling apart, narratively speaking. <laughs> yeah, what in the world happened with me in World War I, man? Um, because it wasn't just, it wasn't Der Weltkrieg. Um, I think that just hammered it home. Um, I mean, the first game I played, World War One, like I said, besides uh, the Grizzled, um, was a uh, was um, the World Undone, nineteen fourteen, East Prussia by uh, Conflict Simulation Li Simulations Limi Limited, and what the hell happened? Like it just, I just went went off in Wonderland, and uh, what the hell? It's, yeah, I just, um, I guess maybe because I just knew s so little or, I don't know, it's it's so intriguing. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I don't know, like a little bit of this or a little bit of that um, of, uh, there's enough of my present or enough I can relate to versus, you know what I mean? It's not so far away or whatever. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, God damn. I wish I could figure out how to edit these. Um, maybe I should uh, go on YouTube and you can cut, ch uh, chop it off or something or whatever. But, uh, or you can, you guys can chop this, uh, chop it off yourselves for God's sakes. Um, holy shoot, I forgot to uh, water my plants. That's why I've got the water um, container over there to heat it up near the um, the air, air vent. Oh, there's a side thing I didn't um, uh, never clued into. Uh, Rob uh, filled up my kettle afterwards. Uh, he was making some. Oh, he brought over some chicory coffee. He was like, like I told you, he's trying to be Mister Authentic. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to warm up, like, and anyways, Rob, like, poured cold water back in my kettle, basically to allow the water to, you know, acclimatize, and then later on, you're not using as much electricity. I was like, oh, interesting. I like that. Ah, 
All right. What are we on to? 20 minutes. Lord have mercy. All right. Hope you're having a good one.